Okay, so hey folks, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Ed Scotus. Uh, I am uh, the director of the Holiday Hack Project. And uh, these are the closing ceremonies for the Holiday Hack 2020. You remember that one's called Zat You Santa Claus. And it's just so exciting to see you all out there doing an in-game closing ceremony. We did an in-game closing ceremony in 2015 and 2016. And then we did a webcast in 17, 18, and 19. But in 2020, the wizardry of Evan Booth and Dan Pendolino brought us back in game. And we're super excited about that. So we'd like to share some things with you. Uh, I'll go first and, and give you a little bit of an overview. Then Josh Wright is going to talk some about the challenges. Evan Booth is going to do some more wizardry. And then we're going to announce the winners. Cool. So I'll do intros and storyline. Josh is going to do the challenges. Evan's going to give us some stats. I'll announce the winners, and then we'll do a conclusion and shameless tease. So here you go, three French hands at KringleCon. So first off, we'd like to thank everyone who participated this year. I mean, we had so many participants, so much interaction. The Discord channel was, was a big success. Uh, I was in there several times. Um, Marcus Stewart set that up for us and just did a great job. Uh, the whole team uh, interacted with uh, various participants in it. Um, it was really nice because we had channels for each objective so that people who were working and wanted to collaborate would go in there. The other thing that was really cool is um, how people would use the redaction box so it would cover things up um, unless you really wanted to see it and you could click on it and get your extra hints and such. So it worked out great. Um, really, thank you for, for participating. Really, I mean, you guys are what makes this whole Holiday Hack challenge so special. Just seeing you, uh, just it, it makes us so happy. We'd also like to thank our sponsors. I mean, the Sands Institute, they developed or they funded all the development and all the operations of this. Um, they want to make sure that they're delivering great content to the community. Um, so they were just awesome. Uh, and uh, they also provided our grand prize, which is pretty darn cool. Um, also, we'd like to thank Google. They provided uh, hosting services on Google Cloud. Uh, they are just a great team uh, to work with. We'd like to thank Splunk. They created another great challenge. That's their second year creating a challenge uh, for us. Uh, it was right there in game and uh, fantastic. Also the SANS Technology Institute, sometimes called SANS.edu. Uh, that's that degree granting uh, component of the SANS family. Um, they are a great sponsor of ours. Uh, and uh, they're doing some really, really cool stuff. Not only do they have the master's degree, uh, they've launched a bachelor's program and more. And then also this year, we had a first time sponsor in RSA Conference. Um, RSA Conference is coming up in May and uh, they were a sponsor of Holiday Hack Challenge. So we're super excited about that. Um, in fact, one of our prizes is uh, attendance at the RSA Conference. We'd also like to thank our Kringle concierges. I mean, this was a brand new thing this year. And, and honestly, we didn't know exactly how it would go. Um, it, was, it was last year that we were kind of thinking, you know, hey, wouldn't it be neat if there was some greeter in game? Um, Lynn did that when we first launched in uh, the 2019 timeframe. And for a couple hours, she just kind of welcomed people as they showed up. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if we could get volunteers so we could expand that program and maybe run it for a couple of weeks? So um, I asked Patrick Chapman and Lynn Schifano uh, from our team if they could coordinate these Kringle concierges. And these folks really made such a difference. I mean, the players interacting with them in Discord and, and just kind of just helping people out. It was a delight to see. We also had, uh, for each of the Kringle concierges, we had a, a cute little hat uh, that they could uh, wear on their avatar. And we might expand that program next year, maybe more concierges or more choices of different things to sort of spruce up your avatar. So thank you to all these great Kringle concierges. Also, thank you to the KringleCon three speakers. We had some you know, great talks from people who've uh, spoken uh, with us before. Uh, also some new uh, folks presented at KringleCon this year. Just really great stuff. Also, I, I wanna point out uh, for the first time at KringleCon, we actually had uh, one of the denizens of the North Pole do a presentation. Uh, I'm talking about Pro Professor Cordy Petabyte. And uh, Professor Petabyte's uh, presentation was just wonderful. Uh, really, really good stuff about blockchain technology and also some of the backstory uh, associated with Bitcoin. If you haven't seen QWERTY Petabyte's presentation, you really need to do yourself a favor and check that out. All of those KringleCon talks are there inside the game, but you can also go to the KringleCon YouTube channel and watch them all there. 
So uh, I, I recommend you check out each one of these talks. They're really good. And what we're going to do is for our KringleCon speakers, as well as the Kringle concierges, we're going to send them the SANS Holiday Hack Challenge 2020 coin. So it's the KringleCon coin. There is a cipher on the back. I love this coin. Uh, actually, uh, Patrick Chapman helped design it. And uh, on the back, you'll see these three little triangles kind of stacked up. And it looks sort of like it's a holiday tree with some snowballs hanging off of it. Or perhaps they're Santa hats that are stacked on top of each other. I just, I thought that was kind of a neat little twist. We'd also like to thank the volunteers. We had a lot of volunteers here that helped make this thing special. Um, Jen, Santiago, Jen Santiago from the uh, SANS uh, Summit team. She was our speaker wrangler. That helps out a whole lot. Our musicians were superb. Um, Dual Core uh, gave us such a, a, a great song. Mary Ellen Kennel had that beautiful, beautiful song, I Wish I Could Be Santa Claus. Um, Ninjala always is mixing up great stuff. My son, Josh Scotus, and his buddy, Devin Kelly, did some cool jazz stuff and rockabilly for us. Um, we had great artists. You know, Annie Royal is our character artist. She always does cool stuff. Brenda Van Rensburg did um, those postcards. Uh, Jessica also was the portrait artist. Uh, that's my daughter. We had great voice artists, uh, Whitney Champion. Um, that was the, the, the voice behind that amazing modem challenge that uh, Evan put together. Uh, Charles Shearer. Uh, he uh, gave us some, some vocal excellence, uh, yip yip, uh, when you would solve the HID challenge. And uh, I, I was the voice of the ho 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 when you become Santa Claus. Uh, R&D, you know, great stuff by Professor Petabyte. You know, again, hats off, thank you. Um, the bird, it wouldn't have been the same without the bird. And that was, of course, Clang. She did a great job there inside the, uh, the TMUX challenge. And we also had some great beta testers uh, this year. Uh, some of these beta testers were people that, uh, you know, in the past had won or, um, you know, other friends of Counterhack and the SANS Institute. Uh, we actually launched the beta test program about a week before we launched the whole, uh, the whole program. And uh, they found a lot of stuff, gave us a lot of insightful feedback and, and really helped out. We're going to be sending each one of these volunteers a Kringle coin as well. And then, of course, there's the counter hack crew. Um, I'm so thankful uh, to count these amazing individuals as my friends and my coworkers. I mean, Evan did incredible stuff. Avatars, he created the world. He made that amazing Santa Vader. He wrote challenges. Uh, Ron Bose, you know, coder, tester, and role model for us all. Uh, Patrick was on messaging and outreach. He also helped coordinate the artists and the Kringle concierges, did some layout stuff for us too. Chris Davis is a machine when it comes to challenge development. Um, he did so many challenges this year, including mini games and full challenges, just awesome stuff. Chris Elgy did a lot with terminal challenges, a lot of challenge dev, mini games. He also was instrumental in writing the narrative and then tweaking that dialogue to get the dialogue just right. What are the elves really supposed to be saying to each other and Santa Claus and, and Jack Frost? Tom Hessman put together the website, does tremendous amount of QA stuff for us and ops. And in fact, he and Daniel are, are operating this thing right now. Tom Liston, great challenge developer. He created some truly phenomenal challenges. This is his you know, first time in the holiday hack uh, world. Um, did some cool stuff with the Elf U research team and coordinating them. Dan Pendolino, infrastructure architect, automation, deving all the ops, opsing all the devs, QA, thank you. Lynn does a huge amount of coordination, project wrangling, community outreach, just helping us all stay as sane as we can. Um, Marcus Stewart, he is a, uh, a, a guy with us uh, for 10 months from the US Air Force. They call it the Education with Industry Program. And we've been fortunate enough to, to be working with the Air Force for several years uh, in that program. Marcus is on loan to us. And he's the one that did a tremendous amount of QA, but he also set up Discord for us and helped kind of figure that out and make sure it could be effective. Uh, he uh, helped to, to manage the uh, swag vendor. Uh, he worked on replying to your reports. He worked on the submission system, lots of cool stuff. Me, I focus on uh, the storyline. That's, that's what I do. And then of course, Josh Wright, challenge director, challenge development, deployment, project management. He's a, a, a jack of all trades. And that's our whole team there. Uh, and you can see us all smiling. This was just before launch. So just in a summary of the story, um, 
Some of you got all the way to the end. Uh, Evan will go through the stats in a little bit. But for those of you who didn't quite get all the way to the end, let me kind of summarize what the whole story was about. So the idea is it's KringleCon, three French hens. And Santa wants to have a bigger venue because if you go two years ago, we had the, uh, the Holiday Hack Challenge inside Santa's castle, but it got really crowded. So last year, and by last year, I mean 2019, um, we moved into Elf University, which was at the time the biggest venue at the North Pole. But even that got pretty filled up. So Santa embarked on this huge program to make the castle bigger. We added floors, there's a huge construction project and so forth. Um, and he was very excited about that. Um, but while they're opening the castle, a portrait arrives in the mail from an anonymous artist, an anonymous benefactor. Now it says, if you look at the bottom of the portrait, JFS, whoever that is, JFS. Also, right around the time that Santa receives that portrait and hangs it in the foyer, he starts behaving kind of weird. You know, I mean, he's behaving erratically. And also, you know, Jack Frost is there in the castle. And I don't know if you noticed this, but wherever Jack Frost was present, we played the Grinch music, right? Because it's just kind of goes hand in hand. Um, so as you investigate and start working your way through this, especially if you can get into that hidden room by, by cloning the hid card, you actually will hop through the portrait and become Santa Claus. So this is all about, is that you, Santa Claus? And if you look at the songs that were set up, you know, outside uh, the, the hid lock, we had a song that was, um, I could be Santa, right? And then when you get inside, it's, I wish I was Santa Claus. And then when you hop out as Santa, the song that's playing is, is that you, Santa Claus? So the idea here is Jack painted that magical portrait, which was a portal into Santa. And you had to figure out why. And as you dig into some of the later challenges, you'll start to see some evidence that shows that Jack views Santa as a rival for control and domination over the North Pole. Jack doesn't like that. He wants to take over the North Pole and commercialize it, calling it the frostiest place on earth because he's Jack Frost, right? So there's a document. It's on one of the systems that you can get into. And when you get this document, it's the meeting minutes from the land use board of the North Pole. And you'll see that Santa had drawn up plans for increasing the size of the castle. And Jack opposed him. Jack didn't want the castle to get any bigger. So Jack messed up a lot of different things. I mean, his goal here was to dominate the whole North Pole terrain because of a land use dispute. But he, he messed things up like Santa's sled, the tag generator, even the naughty nice list. But I'm telling you, many of you stuck it through all the way to the end. You did it. You saved the whole holiday season. You helped bring justice to Jack Frost. And that's why he's in the orange jumpsuit. So that is the story. I'd like to turn things over now to Josh Wright. Josh, please tell us about the challenges. Sure, thanks. We can go to the next slide, Ed. That's great. So I, when we get together and we, uh, as a team, look at what we want to do for challenges for the Holiday Hack Challenge every year, we brainstorm a bunch of different ideas. But, but fundamentally, all of the things that we do for challenges in the Holiday Hack Challenge come down to two critical ideas. Um, is this challenge something that is uh, uh, going to allow us to teach a skill that we've used as consultants in the past year? And so when we look at what attacks, what techniques we're going to apply, it's all based off of things that we do as pen testers in the consulting practice at CounterHack. The second area though, which is also something that we consider very significantly is, is this challenge a key skill area that we think is going to be vital for people to grow? And you'll see that year after year. This year, we had a lot of information on uh, blockchain attacks and uh, Mersenne twisters and uh, random number generator vulnerabilities. And, and that's more on the side of, hey, we think these are important skills we want people to understand. But we also want people to recognize there were some practical skills that we really want them to start putting into use right now, such as the command injection vulnerability and the broken tag generator, the open S3 buckets, and many other skills that we conveyed here as well. So fundamentally, you know, we probably design and spec out four or five times as many potential challenges, and then we whittle it down into this small number to present to you every year with the Holiday Hack Challenge. Move on to the next slide here. 
And so uh, Ed and I had this conversation uh, I, in, in my head, it, it went something like this. Uh, I, I think my words were, uh, let's create a challenge where players can scan for an insecure S3 bucket. And then uh, in, in my mind, Ed said, uh, okay, can we do that reliably? And I said, sure, what could go wrong? We'll go to that next slide here. Uh, and then the tickets started coming in shortly after launch. We started seeing more and more tickets. And at first we were thrilled because this is the first year we've used GitHub to be able to track issues, to be able to really respond to people that are having trouble instead of just an email system. And that worked really well. But we had this ticket that I didn't really understand where people were completing the S3 bucket discovery challenge. They were looking for the right bucket name but, but they couldn't find it. And when we saw several tickets and, and it ended up being uh, consolidated into this issue 23 here where people were looking, but, but that bucket didn't exist. And, and sure enough, when we checked, it, it didn't exist. Now, other people were saying, oh, it's working fine for me. In fact, it worked fine for a lot of us testing, but we, we couldn't understand why some people could find this S3 bucket and, and others couldn't. We'll move on to the next slide here. Turns out that we got shadow banned by AWS, which uh, I, I don't have a badge, but if I did, I would wear that with pride. Uh, it turns out that um, AWS will eventually shadow ban you if you are doing things that they perceive as being nefarious against uh, the S3 bucket uh, service in, in AWS, where sure enough, if you go to the web page for the bucket that was part of the challenge, it would respond with no such bucket. That was from a specific IP address that we, we were using in our um, hosted environment for the terminal challenge where people were, were using the terminal to be able to discover and, and try to enumerate this target system. We'll move on to the next slide here as well. Now, after some more analysis, here's uh, what, what we think happened. What we expected people to do is, is up here, where we expected people to create a small word list and include the hints in the language that we used in the challenge, such as the bucket name wrapper 3000 or maybe wrapper 3K, you know, not more than 10 buckets, but eventually finding the right bucket. But what we think happened is that some people used our infrastructure to download enormous word lists and then just rip through these enormous word lists to find S3 buckets. And it turns out that if you have millions of failed bucket requests from a single IP, Amazon will shadow ban you. Now, you know, we try to make these things as reliable as possible. Sometimes we see these types of situations and then, you know, we, we become smarter in the process. One of the rules that we have at CounterHack is that we don't modify challenges, not in a substantial way that will change the experience from one player to another after it's launched. What we ended up doing here was modifying our local copy of the uh, bucket finder tool such that if you used a large word list, then it would say, uh, it would show you a picture of Santa and it would say, ho, 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 that's, that's not what you want to do here, just to try to encourage people are trying to dissuade people from doing too much scanning. When we figured out the IP that was being shadow banned by Amazon, we got rid of it, we got a new one, and then things started going again. So, you know, this is always a learning opportunity for us as well. When you guys do these challenges and they start to be tested at scale, we learn as well. We move on to the next slide here. <clears throat> Now, another thing that we learned about this year is uh, associated with the challenge, the broken tag generator. This is one of the challenges where it's something that uh, Evan and, and Ron and our team had used in a couple of engagements really, really well, where they were able to get command injection on a couple of our customers' target websites for pen tests by uploading a malicious zip file. The zip file name itself is okay, but the files inside the zip file, that's problematic. And so that led to command injection vulnerabilities. And so uh, Ron designed this challenge, the broken tag generator with Evan's assistance and some other folks on the team. And what we wanted you to do is to create a zip file, have specially crafted file names on the inside, and then use that to execute commands on the web server to be able to get remote access to the target system, ultimately to read from the environment and to get a message from Jack Frost. 
It turns out that you guys solved it much faster and much easier than we anticipated. We thought you were going to do the command injection vulnerability, but what we forgot and what you reminded us of is that there's actually the uh, slash proc slash self slash environ virtual object. And when you read that, you get everything from the environment. So many of you were able to still get command injection, but many of you otherwise just said, I don't need command injection because I can get my data from here. And that's amazing. I love that. I love learning from all of you guys. And, and uh, when you're playing and experimenting and, and testing things out, it's a fantastic opportunity for us. We're always learning and, and I'm always just so thankful and appreciative of all of that. Move on to the next one here. Uh, we are always striving to continually improve as well. You know, every year holiday hack seems like the best thing we've ever created. And, and I don't mean to sound like Apple and, and Tim Cook, but, but this year I think was the most amazing holiday hack challenge we've ever created. And I'm sure next year will be as well. And sometimes that's daunting, but I'm always reassured by the support that we get from the community of people, including many of you, that give us that feedback to say, hey, you know, this could be better, or I really like this, and, and just thank you for that feedback. We want to be as inclusive as possible in all of our challenges. And early on, uh, I got a message on Discord from um, Ariayan uh, Panwar, and I forgive me for mispronouncing that, but null void death, who, who wrote to me on Discord and said, hey, in the Santivator, when you're using all of these lights to be able to manipulate what's going on with the Santivator, those who have uh, low color visibility or have difficulty discerning reds and greens and yellows and things like that, aren't able to solve that challenge. We hadn't thought of that. And I'm just so appreciative that people will reach out and, and kind of, you know, stick their neck out a little bit. We always are so thankful for that. So thank you to Null Void Death for reaching out to us. Um, that, you know, a couple minutes after having that conversation, I reached out to Evan. Evan Brainstorm came up with the idea shown on the right here, where we use different kind of icons to map the different colors, the different elements here, to be able to make it so that this was fully inclusive and everybody could play this even without relying on uh, the different colors discernment here. So thank you very much to you know all of you for your feedback, for your bug notices, for your help, and for the team at CounterHack for being able to respond so quickly to address these issues and to just to continuously improve. And we can move. Ed? Hey, thanks. Oh, That's great stuff, Josh. Uh, Evan, you ready to go? I am, yes. All right. Uh, I have stolen a, a toy from one of my kids um, for, uh, for the slide advancing. So let's try that out here. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to talk about statistics a bit. Um, and that's really all this slide has to offer. The first one I want to look at is um, the, the percentage of players who uh, braved the gondola ride. They were dropped off beside the New, Jer New Jersey Turnpike. And um, to, to move forward, they had to get on the gondola. And 88.93% of players did that. I, I guess the other... 11 like walked or got an Uber or something. And 45.45% of you uh, joined us on Discord. And um, that's, a, that's a, a, a great percentage. Uh, honestly, Discord was one of my favorite parts uh, of Holiday Hack this year going on and uh, watching, watching uh, everyone uh, help everyone through the challenges. Uh, You'd you love to see it. Uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have even more next year. All right, so 15.98% uh, of players um, made it uh, into that dark room and walked towards the light until they uh, fell through the portrait and became Santa. 6.42% of players uh, hacked the Santa Vader and made it up to Santa's office and uh, were able to bypass that security, uh, which is a great, great number. 3.06% uh, of players were able to tackle our final uh, uh, capstone challenge, which is the blockchain. And 2.78% um, uh, of players were able to solve all of the objectives and uh, uh, get to the very end and complete Holiday Hack Challenge 2020. Now, the, the really cool thing about that, sorry to interrupt, Evan, um, but we set for the yeah, answer. <laughs> Uh, you know, when we were working on this, I said, I'd like to see about 3% of people make it all the way through to the end. And wow, I mean, that is almost 
exactly there. So kudos to the team. You really, you really did great. All right, you want to jingle your bell? Excellent. <laughs> 1.95% uh, of you found the secret garden party, which means that a lot of you are like, secret garden party right now? <laughs> but it exists. Uh, and uh, even few of you, fewer uh, of you, 1.61% uh, uh, saw a nail up on uh, some scaffolding. We're like, hey, I wonder what that nail has to say. And uh, here is a breakdown of the percentage of players who are able to complete each challenge. And I will leave this up for a sec. And we start with about 40% uncovering Santa's gift list. And that sort of whittles its way down as uh, challenges uh, progress in difficulty, all the way to the 3.06 we saw that completed uh, both sections of the blockchain uh, challenge. Yeah. And we really are trying to achieve, you know, as much smoothness in this as we can. The thing of it is, like Josh said, sometimes a challenge is easier than you expect it is. Or it will be. And sometimes it's harder. So. But still, this is this is generally the, a nice flow. Here is the same uh, data, but for terminals. We started escaping Tmux. There's a lot of people that are still trapped in Tmux or not trapped in Tmux. I don't know. Um, it goes all the way down to um, th there are actually two programming concepts entries here. The the uh, three point one two at the very end there is for those who completed the uh, the bonus levels. And here is the average number of attempts for each terminal uh, per completion. Maybe some surprises in there. All right, so uh, on Discord, uh, everyone sent uh, 11,052 glorious messages. We had uh, uh, 383 reports submitted. 77 of which rose to the uh, standard of uh, honorable mention. 26, making it all the way to super honorable mention. We had 10 narrative style reports submitted this year, which is always fun to read. We had one uh, report submitted as a blockchain, which is more difficult to read. All right, switching over to dev a little bit. Um, all, of the, uh, all of the information, the data, uh, the content, in Holiday Hack uh, actually comes from a giant spreadsheet, um, which has uh, 150 tabs this year. So that's all the uh, uh, you know, the, the rooms, the maps, locations of the stuff, um, uh, NPC locations, all NPC dialogue, all the objectives, um, what to do with all the tokens, uh, completion criteria, everything. It's 150 tabs in a giant spreadsheet we all work on. We did uh, um, uh, building off of the, the code base from HAC 19, our, uh, 2019. We added uh, 93,829 uh, new lines of code this year. And we did that over 530 commits and 193 pull requests. Uh, some of you may have noticed there, uh, the artwork scattered around Santa's castle sort of had a similar uh, look and feel to it. And if you were to um, pop all of that artwork out of the frame, and uh, reassemble it, you would see this wonderful artwork from Andro uh, Theophilopoulos. And that is all I've got. Back awesome. to you, Ed. Hey, thank you, Evan. That's fantastic stuff. Almost 100,000 lines of new code. Uh, I remember Evan visited in, I guess it was probably 2019, and we were just kind of sitting there having dinner, and somehow the topic of conversation came up. Wouldn't it be cool? if players could just become Santa Claus? Well, how hard could that be? <laughs> 100,000 lines of code later, it turns out it requires a lot. But, uh, but Evan, you did a great job implementing that. And then Daniel, you know, putting it into production, making it all work so well. Just, it's, it's just great to see how you and Dan, Evan and Dan work together to get that stuff done. Um, and then of course, the whole rest of the team developing the challenges and testing them. And, you know, I mean, kudos to you. So thank you. Cool. So. How about we talk winning entries? You ready? All right. So really, you know, our focus here is, is on learning. I mean, we're, we're trying to give you challenges that are fun, but also that teach you practical, interesting, and useful skills. In other words, we don't want just puzzles for puzzles sake. Um, I saw a wonderful quote 
uh, by Anna Wagner in uh, Twitter the other day saying, look, we all win when we learn. And, and really that is the mindset that we write these things to. That said, some people want to get a little competitive and, and earn an honorable mention or a super honorable mention or even one of the big prizes. Um, that's cool, but never lose sight of that, that learning objective and really trying to develop your skills. Also meet some friends. That's a neat thing about the Discord interaction is a lot of people uh, you know, made new friends that they had never met before and uh, worked together on Holiday Hack. It's, it's really pretty cool stuff. So let's go and take a look at our winning entries. First, we had a, a special little contest. We were trying to, you know, promote holiday hack. So I had this idea and I ran it by Patrick and said, hey, what if we, what if we have a, a contest where we ask people how they encourage other people to play holiday hack? So the hashtag was try holiday hack. Um, and we, we got a whole bunch of responses there. People telling their co coworkers and friends and telling high schools, um, maybe even working with some of the kids and such to, to help make this happen. And uh, this one, uh, you know, I chose uh, what I thought was a, a really solid one here, uh, Blue Collar Cyber BCC, um, who mentioned, I share every year with the cyber team, the SOC analysts mention in status reports and tie into our training. That's just so awesome. It's fun, informative, and makes my small heart grow three sizes. So you got that Grinch quote there. It was just, just a, a great job. Thank you, Blue Collar Cyber. Um, we'll be sending you a Kringle coin. Cool. All right, now let's move on. Here are the honorable mentions. Uh, I, I know many of these folks and uh, congratulations. This is the first slide of honorable mentions. You can see this just goes A through K. There's more coming, um, but we're gonna go ahead and put these on the, the SANS or the, uh, the Holiday Hack website uh, so that you'll be able to, to see your name up there. Uh, we'll get those uploaded soon. Here's the second set of honorable mentions. Again, I see some, uh, some good friends here, some people I've known for a while, plus some, some brand new friends. So awesome, congratulations. There's K through S. And then on our next one, third set of honorable mentions, we got uh, the remainder of the S's all the way up through the Y's. So congratulations for this, this group of honorable mentions. Uh, again, you'll be put on the website. Now let's talk super honorable mentions. I mean, really earning an honorable mention is tremendous. I mean, these people did really, really good work, but a super honorable mention is something that we found particularly interesting or unusual or different. Um, oh, the slides going back here. So here's your first set of super honorable mentions. You can see here uh, that we go from B all the way up to T. In fact, this is the whole group of super honorable mentions. Again, we'll place your names on the Holiday Hack uh, winning website. So you'll be up there immortalized uh, just as we've done in previous years. So our super honorable mentions, cool. Next, random draw winners. Um, you know, every year we do a random draw uh, choosing seven people uh, so that they can receive a t-shirt. So we're going to send out a t-shirt to each one of these individuals. You'll probably be hearing from Patrick or Lynn. By the way, that swag is still available at the swag booth. Um, we don't make any money on it. We, we want to get it to you at the same price that uh, the vendor actually charges us for it. So there's no markup or anything like that. We just want to get to you the swag. There's some, some cool stuff there. There's great stickers. There's uh, t-shirts and, and hoodies and more. Um, so, and I'd like to thank Marcus Stewart for coordinating the whole vendor swag thing. And he actually did some really great layout of those shirts. Um, really, really cool. So again, it's at teespring.com. You can go there to KringleCon swag. Congratulations to our random prize winners. Um, by the way, we used a random.org for that. We did have a bit of a debate on the team. Um, should we use a, a Marcin Prime uh, to pick that stuff? And I said, nah, not after we told people that that's kind of dangerous. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and use random.org, which is bouncing lasers off the stratospheres or something like that for their, uh, for their randomness. All right, so what's next? Most creative. Our most creative victor this year is going to get attendance at the RSA Conference Virtual Experience um, 2021. That'll be in May. Um, and... Uh, RSA, you know, offered this prize for us. It'll be going to Jeremy Phillips, whose answer was incredible. It was submitted on these scrolls and described the adventure that Jeremy went through in trying to, to, to 
solve holiday hack challenge and trying to uh, you know save the holiday season. Um, we're going to go ahead and also send uh, Kringle Coin to uh, Jeremy as well, and also to the runners up, Mark Mulvaney and Mike Boyle will send you a uh, a coin as well. Cool. Next, the best technical answer. This is Thomas Bouvet. It is a phenomenal piece of work. Uh, Thomas, you'll be getting a Networks Continuous as your prize uh, for this. That's a four months access to Networks Continuous. Um, so you can continue to develop your already very impressive skills. Um, just, just really cool stuff. And uh, Thomas had a, a, a bunch of fun things, Easter eggs and so forth in, uh, in this write-up. Um, and also this sort of being Santa Claus, sort of that, that takeoff on the movie uh, being John Malkovich, which actually was kind of the original inspiration for this concept of becoming Santa Claus. And in fact, that's why we put the New Jersey Turnpike in there. So if you click on the New Jersey Turnpike, a button at the top of the screen, it would drop you right by the New Jersey Turnpike. So congratulations, Thomas, incredible work. And a runner up here will be uh, uh, Gabriel Quiraz, uh, and we'll be sending uh, Gabriel uh, a Kringle coin as well. But then the big prize, best overall answer and our grand prize winner, which will be a free SANS course for Stanislav Nurolov. This is a fantastic piece of work. It, it's, it's very well laid out. It's very educational. When we're looking for the, the big prize, we're looking for what we would consider to be the official answer. Um, now, 50 pages is quite limiting when there's this many challenges, but we wanted people, first of all, to not submit 300 page reports like they have in the past. Uh, in the past, we would get 200 pages, 300 pages. Um, that's neat. We appreciate that somebody takes the time and effort to put that together, but it is kind of hard for us to, to read it. We do read every single report that comes in. Um, in fact, many of the reports get read multiple times as we're going through this iteration to choose what we consider you know, the, the grand prize winner. Um, so Stanislav, congratulations on a job well done. If you want to read, uh, I think it's 49 pages or maybe 50 um, that, that describe the holiday hack in a, a very good level of detail, very well uh, executed and laid out, please read Stanislav Nurolov's uh, work. Um, runners up here, Neil Eikenberry and Janice Jasinski, um, both did great work. We'll be getting you uh, Kringle coins as well for Neil and Janice. Um, and I know Janice in the past has, uh, has won before, so uh, really, really cool. So congratulations, Stanislav. Got one more person I'd like to announce. You know, last year we had some folks that played and they had won like the two years before that. And uh, they were from a company called ESNet. Um, that was fantastic. Vlad and, and the team just do such great work. But when they played last year, they told us that they didn't want to win. They wanted to write up their entry, but didn't want to win because they wanted somebody else to have a chance to win the prize. So we created something called the Extra Special Noteworthy Exemplary Trophy Award, also known as the ESNet Award. As I mentioned, the ESNet team won the first year ever that we had the ESNet Award. This year, we're keeping the award and we'd like it to go to Andy Smith. Andy Smith, he, he, he played this year. He made great videos. He was a Kringle concierge. These videos that he does in YouTube are, are amazing. They're really a gift to the community. And you can go through, they're very well produced, very well put together. Um, but Andy said to us, he said, I don't want to win. I want to do my videos because that's kind of my support and help of the community. It's a way that he can help other people learn from Holiday Hack Challenge. But he said he didn't want to win one of the big prizes. So he, he won, by the way, last year he won a big prize, but this year he said, no, he's not doing it for competition. He wants to do it to help the community, which is just beautiful. So um, Andy, we're going to go ahead and send you a, a Kringle uh, coin. And of course you're getting one because you're a Kringle concierge. So you'll have, you'll have a couple of those coins. So thank you for all you do, Andy. Really good stuff. If you want to learn how to hack challenge and you want to read, I recommend you look at Stanislav's report. If you want to see videos, check out Andy Smith's stuff. It's just so good. Josh and Evan, anything to add before I get into the sneak peek? All set here. Okay, good. Just thrilled to be part of the team and have a chance to do this. Yay, yay, thank you. All right, folks, I heard from Santa Claus last week that something has gone awry. I'm uh, sorry to tell you this, but I mean, it's important for you to be up to date with what's happening. You folks work fantastically to help get Jack Frost 
his plan to help defeat what he was up to. That's why he's here in the orange jumpsuit, right? Um, but the North Pole legal system is very complex. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of complex case law in the past, a lot of precedents and things like that. I mean, North Pole is a very nice and friendly place, but well, sometimes cases will turn on a small technicality. And in fact, that is what's happened here. They tried to prosecute Jack Frost for his crime of trying to destroy the holiday season, but he had a really good lawyer. And um, well, I got to tell you, in 2021, Jack is back. He got out. He's uh, got some other nefarious plan, no doubt. We'll keep a close eye on him for the whole year, but uh, you might have to tangle with Jack and some new, new ideas that uh, Jack will be working on throughout the year. But uh, Jack is not going to prison. He's back with a big mischievous grin for you. Cool. So in closing, we'd like to thank you all uh, for, for your participation, for coming here to the closing ceremony. Um, we'd recommend that you follow at KringleCon because we sometimes post details, you know, year round. I mean, if you think about it, you know, in 2020, because of the whole COVID situation, we did do a small miniature holiday hack challenge in May, just to kind of give people something to do during lockdown. And then of course, the big holiday hack challenge that happened in December. Um, we're already working on this year's holiday hack challenge, the 2021 version. Storyline is coming together. Santa Claus has told us about some of the things that he's observed Jack doing. It's super exciting. But we do ask a favor of you. If you could share feedback for Holiday Hack Challenge 2020, the, the team will provide you the URL. I think they're gonna pop it up uh, in game on the screen with a whisper or something like that. If the team could do that um, or drop it in the chat channel or both, uh, but please take a few minutes, if you would, to just fill out that survey because we do learn from it. We we get good input. You know, what challenges did people especially like? What kinds of challenges maybe you like less? So please do uh, get us that information. Uh, we'd really appreciate your feedback. And in closing, I'd like to thank uh, this team, the whole Counterhack team. Like Josh said, I, I really think this was your best work ever. Um, I'm so appreciative of how hard you worked. Um, and uh, I, I think all the thousands and thousands of participants uh, appreciate that as well. So my hat is literally off to you. Uh, thanks for everything. And uh, here's to a good, safe 2021. And we'll see you at Holiday Hack 2021 in December.